I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Dr. John Burba, Chairman and CEO of International Battery Metals. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Oh, good. <laughs> so to start off, could you tell me a little bit about your background and experience in the lithium sector? Certainly. Um, so I, I actually entered the lithium sector uh, immediately after getting my PhD. Joined Dow Chemical in a group that was uh, interested in pulling lithium out of oil field brines, oddly enough, and that was in 1979. So we did our first project there, and uh, that's what I really call our phase one technology. Um, we, uh, we ran a pilot plant, and then Dow exited that business. Then my next exposure was with FMC Corporation, and we applied some dramatically improved technology and actually built a lithium recovery plant that, uh, in Argentina, and that plant has been operating since 1998. And now in this version of lithium, um, we've improved the technology even more. And so we're ha we have what we call our third generation technology. We have improved the, um, the uh, absorbent that, uh, that picks up the lithium dramatically, and then we have a, a very, very different way of employing that absorbent that gives us some major advantages, particularly for oil field applications. Okay, so extremely long background in the lithium industry, that's great. How do you see the market today? Are investors still interested in lithium? Or are they moving more toward other battery metals right now? Certainly. Well, lithium is still really, really hot. Mm -hmm. And so, in my experience, and I've been in a number of other things, um, I did a stint with the rare earth uh, mm -hmm. activities. The, the thing that you have to look at on these is what is the demand side as opposed to the supply side. And in lithium, we've got a perfect storm because the demand side is just exploding with electric vehicles, um, power backup for grid systems, um, and then power backup for uh, cloud systems, data, data systems. All three of those are huge demands for lithium ion batteries. And um, so the demand side is extremely high and the supply side is limited because we have only a few large companies and they're not gigantic companies, they're large with respect to lithium. And really only three resources that are being grown on. So the industry today is under a lot of stress. These guys are doing the best they can to supply more, but it's very time consuming, very expensive. So uh, that is what is causing the, this very, very high price situation that is continuing to go up. Um, what we're doing, our, our solution is going to allow us to bring new resources on very rapidly. And I think that that's going to be very beneficial to the industry. Interestingly, in Q1, we did see some concerns about that lithium supply and demand balance with some mm -hmm. people saying, no, there's oversupply. What are your thoughts on that? You, we could have some, some temporary oversupply situations in the near term mm -hmm. uh, as uh, companies bring on um, big projects that have been under development. If they come on fast, you could have a, some easing in the pressure. But I don't think I'm seeing that. I was looking at lithium pricing yesterday, and its lithium carbonate is, is actually higher than it was mm -hmm. at the end of the year. So a lot of it is people are speculating. They don't know. But these, the lithium industry as it is with the current suppliers, it's actually fairly brittle in that it's, there's not a lot that they can do because their processes are large, very expensive to build, and it takes a long time to bring them on. Okay, so supply. Um, let's talk a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. Many market participants say that it's very difficult to get projects ramped up on time to meet this increasing demand. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little more about your technology for extraction? You mentioned a few key points that mm -hmm. investors probably want to know about. Certainly. Well, first of all, our technology is, um, is based on technology that has been commercial for a long time mm -hmm. and it's technology so the original version of this as I mentioned earlier was um, based on an invention that a friend of mine Bill Bauman who is no longer with us unfortunately but Bill and I invented this in 1994 we sold that in that intellectual property at FMC I went to work for FMC then designed FMC's plant and the, the first level design and the engineering guys took it and did the real design work and then they, they built the plant in Argentina. 
And so that technology has been functioning quite well continuously for, since 1998. So we're not starting with something that's speculative. We're starting with something that we know works. So the core of it works. So as I said earlier, what we have done now is we've improved that absorbent so that we have better performance out of the absorbent. And then we've drastically changed the way that it's utilized in the engineering equipment. And what that is allowing us to do is to build units that can be rapidly moved into locations in the oil, in oil industry, and we can put them, they can be segregated by or separated by long distances. So we may have a unit uh, here, there may be another unit five miles from here, another one 15 miles from there. These units then will turn out a product that can be shipped to a central plant for finishing and then distribution. Because these, these things are portable, we can pick them up and move them around. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I say that we can put these things in location very fast and, and exploit a, a good resource very quickly. We're also going into resources that have already been drilled and have, oil, have wells that we can draw the brine from, uh, and there are disposal wells. So another aspect of our technology that I am very proud of is that we have an incredibly small environmental footprint. If you look at the, you can go on Google Earth and take a look at uh, the Atacama Desert in Chile, and you'll see tens of thousands of acres of evaporation ponds, and then a lot of giant stock, uh, piles of salt just laying out on the desert. Then if you go and you look at green bushes, which is the largest lithium um, uh, spodumene mine in the world, that's in uh, Western Australia, you go and look at that thing and it's a massive open pit with rock piles. So we don't have any of that because we take brine that has come out of the ground, we run it one pass through our process, and then it goes right back in the ground. We don't add anything to it, all we do is pull the lithium out. And so we have, we just don't have a lot of the environmental issues that are, that are inherent in these other processes. Okay, so we've got, Quick deployment, low environmental impact, yes. and costs are low. -cost. We expect that we're going to be in the lower tier of the um, of the cost structure. I can't obviously I can't give any forward looking statements on that. And a lot of it is we need to get something out in the field and run it and see what it's actually going to do under the conditions. But the engineering tells us that we're going to be substantially lower cost than spodumene. I think we're going to be in the lower in the bottom tier, which is where we really want to be. Okay, so we've got we've got high lithium prices right now. We've got lots of companies in the space, mm -hmm. big companies like Tesla interested. Mm -hmm. Is now still the time for investors to oh, yeah. get in? Yes. Yeah, I mean this is this is almost like the wild wild west. Mm -hmm. I mean, the big question in in the, in the space is, is anything going to come along that will replace lithium in these batteries? Um, so I'm you know. I've been in chemistry and <laughs> technology development for uh, many decades, mm -hmm. um, trained as a physical chemist, and lithium has fundamental characteristics that other elements in, in the periodic table don't have. So that says theoretically lithium is going to give the best performance in these batteries. Everybody is going, all of these things are driven by performance because you want less weight, more capacity. I don't think it's likely that we're going to see a big replacement in lithium anytime soon. Now, you never say never, but uh, it's not, I don't think it's likely. So I think we're going to be living with lithium for quite some time. That said, the, I think that society as a whole, global society, has decided we're moving electric. And you know, I really believe in the tipping points, and I believe in societal drivers. And so I think we've reached a tipping point, enough people enough decision makers, and that's like you and me and what we buy, in the world have decided we're going electric. And once that happens, there's no going backwards unless there's a disaster. So I think that that is the big drive. And so when you look at the penetration rate of electric vehicles today, it's, it's trivial. You know, China's got the greatest, and they're still a very small percentage of all their cars. It's moving, and I think that the, um, the demand is just going to be staggering. So I think an analogy would be 1920 in, with the oil and gas industry. And so I think that we're in potentially for a very long run of sustained pricing, good pricing, and uh, high demand.
So that's my per personal perspective on it. Okay, so you've spoken about your company, the broad picture of mm -hmm. what you are doing, and you've just taken the helm there. Is there mm -hmm. anything you can tell investors about what's coming up next? Well, we are we are moving rapidly to um, to get our demonstration unit built. We have several engineering steps that we're going to go through, and uh, as we accomplish, we have a number of key accomplishments that will be coming out. Uh, we've already got the program designed, and we're kicking that off. Um, and as we reach those goals, then we'll we'll be making announcements accordingly. But we expect to be moving very rapidly toward having a uh, a unit uh, in the field and demonstrate that we can we can successfully extract lithium at high you know at high recovery rates. So those will be coming you know soon. I can't obviously say exactly when, but it's. But that's the path. So you know, on any of these things, to do good engineering, you you break it into pieces. So we have some laboratory work we'll be doing, and that's to qualify brines and different resources. We'll be making prototypes on small scale, then we'll make a big unit, and we'll operate it, and then move forward. Okay. So. Perfect. Well, we'll be watching to see what you do next. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for coming. <laughs> yes. Once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Dr. John Burba of International Battery Metals.